Okay, it wasn't actually that simple. I used to love the game. As a kid, I would get back home from school and go online to chat and play with my friends, both real and internet friends, and decorate my glue with the new stuff they kept adding and... Wait, what's the metaverse again? Anyways, I was really into it, and at that point in my life, I wasn't even thinking about coding. If you never played Club Penguin, they used to update it every month or so with special events or new minigames. Not like Fortnite nowadays. <laughs> So one of the things I enjoyed doing around that game was to read blogs that published news, tips and guides about the game, because not only was it a fun way to find out what the updates included, but it also had a sense of community to it. So after a couple of months of doing this, I realized that some of the blogs didn't always include the content that I knew about, and some of them were extremely basic in terms of visuals and overall user experience, so my mind inevitably gravitated towards the question, how hard would it be for me to build something like that? It is a weird origin story, but that was the spark that eventually put me on the path that I am today. Great story. And that's the whole point. There are a lot of things that your brain is going to find more interesting than coding at the beginning, so understanding this and using it to your advantage is key, but more on that later. Anyways, after a bit of research, I'd made up my mind. I was going to start my own blog about Club Penguin. Now, I obviously didn't jump into the deep end and try to code one from scratch. I started with a free WordPress blog and just started writing content for it. But it was enough to slowly start piquing my interest about what was technically possible. Interesting. For example, I started wondering what I could do in terms of styling, which meant that I needed to learn some HTML and CSS. At a later point in time, I decided I wanted to move away from the free WordPress hosted platform I was using and into a separate hosting service with a WordPress installation managed by me, which meant that I was suddenly exposed to PHP and MySQL. Once that was within my control and the blog started getting a considerable amount of views every month, I got interested in stepping up my game in terms of the interactivity of the blog, which led me to learning some JavaScript and CSS3. You can probably see where I'm getting at. Learning how to code was an activity I engaged with in every step of the way while I was pursuing other interests, and it was that symbiotic relationship that made me stick with it in the long run. I wasn't doing it intentionally when I was younger, but it appears that I was implementing a technique that is now widely promoted in the world of productivity and habit building called temptation bundling, pairing a pleasurable indulgence with a behavior that provides delayed rewards. And it really just means that we can use the things we enjoy doing, like playing Club Penguin, to invoke the willpower to also do the things that we don't want to do, the things that come with the long-term benefits like learning how to code. So how did this bring me to Microsoft? Everything I built as a kid around Club Penguin really ingrained in me the idea that you could use coding to build almost anything. And that made me inevitably interested in other areas of technology, which eventually developed into an obsession with mobile apps after seeing the App Store be introduced back in 28. What we call the App Store. For me, it was just mind blowing how you can now physically touch software and have it live in your pocket. So after a couple of years of learning the basics of iPhone development during high school, it was time to take another stab at building something. I'm getting an idea. I knew I had to build something on top of the Club Penguin stuff. By that time, there was a big community of people following the website, and that was a huge motivator for me. I also really liked playing video games in general at that time, so I grabbed a somewhat stretched intersection of these and developed an iPhone game with a penguin as a protagonist. And yes, I did get some inspiration from Flappy Bird. Now, the game itself didn't really take off, but it was a huge learning opportunity, and little did I know that its impact would be in an entirely different department later down the line. Around a year after that, Microsoft made a recruiting visit to my university. Some people I considered really smart had applied for an internship with them in the past and they had all been rejected. So I didn't get my hopes up, but I applied anyways. Luckily, I was invited for interviews and when my final round came, almost all of my interviewers were really interested in the game I had developed and because I could carry it with me on my phone, it was really easy to just show it to them. Now I am definitely not saying that that was the only factor because I did practice a ton of coding questions when preparing for my interviews but I did manage to go home that day with an internship offer in hand. The vast majority of people looking for a career in software development usually start in one of these places. Admissions for a higher education institution or a Google search, leading to a coding bootcamp or a really big series of tutorials. Both of these options teach you the fundamentals of programming and computer science, and I'm not here to bash on these. 
the curriculums they usually offer are robust and will likely give you the technical skills you need to kickstart your career if you stick with it in the long run. But that last part right there is where I often hear people struggle. Coding itself isn't always the most fun thing in the world, and there's a huge list of other things you'd probably rather be doing. So this somewhat tedious new skill you're trying to build finds itself constantly competing with them, and it's easy to see how it loses. While there is no getting around the fact that you'll need to put in the hours when you're starting out, I think it's more important to find a way to really enjoy what you're doing so that you'll stick with it in the long run. Coding can take the backseat while you pursue your other interests and slowly bring it in to build something you're genuinely excited about and will keep you coming back to learn more. You've probably heard it before, but Steve Jobs once said in his famous Stanford commencement speech, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So I truly believe that taking the time to explore your interests and later finding ways to incorporate software projects can really pay off in the long run. Because you'll see code for what it is, a tool. And the more you use it to build stuff you're passionate about, the more you'll want to master it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you got something useful out of this. And if you're curious about what a regular day in my life looks like as a software engineer, I recently made a video about that. So you should be able to watch that here. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.